Welcome stormwater designers and thank you for watching this video. Today is another stormwater education video where we go over the Orifice equation. Um, so we'll go over the Orifice equation, how the Orifice works in stormwater management, and uh, some of the governing principles and equations surrounding Orifices. So this could work uh, for you learning from a stormwater management side, but also maybe from a fluid mechanics class where you're going over the Orifice equation. So uh, a couple uh, things here for uh, both those parties. But let's just uh, dive right in. Real quick on Clear Creek Solutions, Clear Creek Solutions offers a variety of services, including stormwater analysis and facility modeling for projects, software development. We've, uh, we've developed software packages for uh, clients around the globe, as well as hydrology education, such as these videos and clinics on our software packages and elements. So let's dive right, right in. Here's the definition of an orifice, and this is not my own. This is from engineeringnotes.com, but just uh, this will... Sort of give us an introduction. An orifice may be defined as an opening provided in the side or bottom of a tank for the purpose of discharging the liquid contained in the tank. It should be noted that the opening will be considered as an orifice only when the liquid surface in the tank is above the upper edge of the opening. Orifice may be classified based on the size, shape, sharpness, and discharge conditions. And that's going to become really important uh, here. But basically, um, an orifice is it's an opening in a tank, so usually um, you know a tank filled with liquid, or, or uh, for stormwater management, usually water, um, where there's some sort of an opening near the bottom or maybe the middle of the tank, and the surface of the water is above it, so that the water is uh, is coming out the side. So that's what defines an orifice, and there's many things that can govern uh, the discharge conditions. Uh, size is really important, so the size of the opening, the shape, rectangular, is it a notch? Um, and like I said, and sharpness may uh, govern how that orifice operates. Let's just look here at a quick diagram. We've got the total height of the water, and then we've got the height of the orifice from uh, the ground level. And, th and these factors are going to contribute to how the uh, the orifice functions. But that's just sort of a basic diagram there. And this might be an example of a real-life orifice tank that you might use in a lab project. Um, there's a couple different um, notches there for the water to come out of. You might rotate uh, the switch there, and the water will start to come out. Um, so you'd fill this tank with water. Uh, I'll, I'll show you here real quick. So there's two orifice situations that um, will affect how it will operate. So one will be the orifice discharging water freely into the atmosphere. That's the one on the left. So it's just if you had a tank and water was coming out, and uh, so, and it wasn't surrounded by any more liquid. It was just discharging freely into the atmosphere. That's the situation here uh, on the left. And the situation on the right is where the orifice is submerged in water. So there's, so there's water, and it's, and it's coming out the orifice, but then there's also another height of water on the other side. So it's not discharging freely into the air. As you can see, this is the more complicated equation. There's a lot more factors involved. This one's a lot simpler. Um, and there's a couple different factors when, it goes, when the orifice is discharging freely into the atmosphere. Uh, the volumetric flow is important. The cross-sectional area of that flow, the acceleration to gravity, so 9.81 or 32.2, depending on uh, which units you're using. And then, of course, the height of the fluid above the orifice is also going to be very, very important. Um, and then area not is just going to be that, that cross-sectional area of flow. And then C is just uh, is a discharge coefficient. So... That's depending on the shape and size of your orifice that's going to determine that discharge coefficient. So this is just a quick like example lab, which is a falling head test. And we're not going to go super um, in detail with this. But basically, uh, you can just read through the lab real quick. You're just recording times as the water drops through the orifice. And based on that, the times that you collect and based on that data, you can uh, adjust it and then determine the uh, co discharge coefficient for the orifice that you're using. So, like I said, I'm not going to go uh, very deep into detail, but this uh, phenomenon can be observed uh, through lab testing, which is all I wanted to prove here. And then uh, based on that lab, you can then uh, calculate uh, what your theoretical percent error is. So this is just a quick like experiment that you can do to uh, determine that discharge coefficient. But how does this apply to stormwater management? So... When it comes to stormwater management, especially when you're designing things like ponds or trapezoidal ponds in a WWHM 2012 or Women's Swim or any other stormwater package, um, you're going to need a, usually as a tank, a riser with an orifice in that pond. And those serve a few different purposes. You can see the diagram on the left, how that might look in your pond. And then uh, this is a screenshot from WWHM 2012 about all the factors that go in to designing the orifice and the outlet structure. So as you can see here, the height of the orifice here is actually zero, meaning there's no orifice in this setup. 
but usually the orifice height will be uh, above zero if you if you need one as well as the diameter what's really important also is the riser the riser is going to determine when the, the water can enter into that tank and then finally discharge out of the orifice so like we said before this is not discharging into uh, open air. This is discharging back into the system. So this is a steady state flow. So if we go back uh, quite a few slides here, this would be this situation. So when this comes to stormwater management, it's the submerged orifice operating under steady flow conditions. We're gonna be using this equation. As you can see, there's quite a few uh, variables there uh, when using this. So the riser, as I mentioned before, which is uh, this right here, the riser height determines when the water is going to enter the tank and then it's going to get discharged back out the orifice through the tank back into the steady state flow. This allows uh, the pond to be uh, sized correctly. Without the riser, um, it's difficult to, to determine that. And so th this purpose is to keep the water from rising above uh, the pond height or the, the tank height and just sort of allow for an equilibrium inside that pond and uh, keep the flow under control. As I said before, the design factors are going to be uh, the submerged orifice or this equation. As you can see, there's a total of nine different variables. So we got Q, we got A, 2, V2, C, 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 V, A, and then, uh, of course, gravity, and then both the heights that are going to be used in this equation. So that's a lot of variables. That's nine variables. It's going to be very, very difficult to sort of cal uh, calibrate an orifice or a tank uh, in a riser situation like this by hand, especially with the different coefficients, the different sizes of risers that you can do or, or orifice sizes. So like whether it's notched, a V notch, rectangular, um, there's a lot of factors at play here and that'd take a very long time to do by hand. So what is the solution here? The solution would be using a, pro a software package such as WimSwim, which is a continuous simulation hydrology model. This allows you to uh, model facilities like ponds, and the different aspects, such as your riser, your tank, and your orifice, very quickly using our auto pond feature. So you don't have to do that by hand, uh, punching it out in an Excel file forever. Not even sure if that pond is going to meet standards. You can just use a software package like WimSwim. It's utilizing the latest developments and LID elements uh, to create stormwater models, and it just blows other software packages out of the water, especially with the auto pond tool that would help you size and use these orifices, risers, and tank structures. So you can pick up WimSwim today. Go to clearcreeksolutions.com, go to products WimSwim, and check it out today. Now, I do want to offer you a free gift. That is our free template pack. So this template pack includes 15 uh, pre-made models that you can use in WWHM 2012 and WimSwim to get you started creating your packages right away. So you don't have to build everything from scratch. we got 15 templates here, uh, basin, basin to pond, basin to bioretention, uh, you name it. It's in this template pack. Just go to the description uh, give us your email and we'll send you that template pack uh, today. So go pick up that free template pack. We thank you for watching this video and we'll see you guys next time.